Right, so let's go back. <laughs> uh, and uh, I would like to do some laps of Zandvoort tonight. Why Zandvoort? Well, first of all, it's been a long time that I haven't driven anything at all at Zandvoort. It's a very nice track. Uh, it's now, uh, you know, history, uh, historic track because they changed it. So it's probably the last and most modern implementation of this circuit in any sim. Um, so let's try Zandvoort. And because it has some uh, very long terms of various speeds, so we have long 180 degrees turns, as you can see here, um, in second gear, another one in probably first gear. We have a very long turn here in fourth gear, uh, another long uh, in third gear, another one in fourth or fifth gear. So very long uh, turns uh, with pretty much constant radius uh, in various gears. And why we need this? I want to show you some stuff about how the car reacts and how you can understand uh, if there is a problem with the car or if there's a problem with your driving style. As you know, the Porsche has its engine after its rear wheel, so all the weight is here. But another thing that it is very, very important on the Porsches, because by the rules, the cars have to maintain their fuel tank at the same place as, you know, the real car, the street car, uh, the Porsches have their fuel tank here to the front. So you, you have the rear engine right here, lots of weight at the rear, and you have 120 liters, you know, almost 100 kilos of fuel load at the front, behind the front wheels, which means that uh, depending on how much fuel you have, the whole weight balance of the car changes a lot, a lot. Uh, so, all right, so first thing first, um, as usual, I start with uh, the um, aggressive setup. So what we're going to do, uh, as usual, is we're going to choose the aggressive setup. We are going to do some laps. We need at least four to five laps. Uh, I also need to, you know, get up to speed with, uh, with the circuit. Uh, and um, I also want to, uh, first thing, step number one, prepare the pressures. For whatever driving style we have right now, I'm pretty sure we're not yet uh, very, very good uh, at driving this car on this circuit, but at least the first thing we have to do is do some laps, start to, you know, understand the car a little bit and correct the pressures for the ambient temperature, for uh, the whole circuit and for the car. Because obviously the aggressive setup is always a good point to start, uh, but you have to adjust the pressures every time because the ambient and the track temperature changes uh, depending on whatever weather you have or whatever conditions or whatever day of the uh, time of the day you have. All right, let's go. Ah, listen to the sound of this thing. Normal aspirated flat six, 9,000 RPM. And because it is a relatively small engine, in comparison to the other cars, it's almost, almost non-restricted. So it gives power up to the limiter of 9,000 RPM. Hear the scream, screaming. Listen to that. Power! <laughs> break <laughs> all right that's amazing oh fourth gear oh all right all right at least i've managed to do one lap and i'm still alive almost there is other also a different characteristic uh with the porsche and uh the problem is that it is the car with the smallest wheelbase of all of them. 
Now, what that means? Whoa, here, here's what it means. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Code brown. It means that um, because the wheelbase is so short, it really is the shortest wheelbase uh, of all of the cars by a big margin, it is also very agile. It wants to change direction very, very fast. And we can see that in chicanes like this. I mean, look at that. Boom. It's instant, instant change of direction. But exactly because of that, because of the uh, willingness to change direction so fast, it is also a bit unstable uh, while you are trying to, you know, turn into the turn. Uh, or while we, you are coasting uh, into a long, uh, long turn as, as we have here at, uh, at Zadvor. So what are we doing now? 39s. Yeah, it's pretty high. Uh, I think it would be a realistic uh, target for tonight to manage to do something like uh, 36 maybe in race stream as usual 37 32 oh, oh, oh my god <laughs> 36 or 37 something like that i think it's to be realistic okay 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 so uh i should have go in but okay let's let's stop like this this time because there's so many things i would like to tell you so let's move on right so first thing fix the pressures so 27.2, we want to stay at 27.5.6, something like that. Uh, it's not bad, but it's better if it's go a little bit higher. Hello, Duki! Hi, mate! How are you doing? All right, so one, two, three. Let's, let's stay at three. And here we have 26.9. Oh, that's very low. All right, so um, one and one, two, three, four, five. And 26.9 again, so 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, for the people that do not remember, you do at least 4 or 5 laps. You check your last readings here, and you try to make that PSI hot while you're driving to be at around 27.5, 27.6. The good range is from 27.4 to 28, something like that. So stay somewhere around there. And um, to do so, you get then your cold pressures and you raise them by the number of clicks, you know, of point uh, value that you want the hot pressure to be. So, for example, here, okay, we are at 26.6 and we want this to become 27.5, which means that we need uh, nine clicks. Okay, nine clicks. We need this from 26.6 to become 27.5, which means we need 0 0.9 more. So you go on the cold one. You don't care what it says here. It's just the cold pressure. You just go nine clicks more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The end pressure is 26.2. Doesn't matter. You don't care about that. You want, you know that you did nine clicks, which means that when we go out and drive again at the same conditions, this pressure will become 27.5. Okay? So, um, why is this important? It is very important. The pressure is the most important thing to have grip out of your tire because the pressure is what sustains the skeleton of, the, uh, of, of your tire and gives the maximum footprint of your tire to touch the asphalt. Now, the temperature could be a little bit lower than ideal or a little bit higher than ideal. It happens. You cannot do much about the temperature. The temperature is what it is. You can raise it by 5 degrees or lower it by 5 degrees and a little, a little, a little bit more by changing your driving style, but you cannot do miracles with the temperature. So the most important thing you can change is the pressure. Always, first thing to do, change the pressures. And you do this the first time, you change some stuff, you, you drive again, you change some stuff maybe on the um, uh, 
car because you know you want to change it to be the car you go out you drive again and you control the pressures back again okay all right so all right so now we're gonna see if with the correct pressures the car behaves a little bit better a game Yeah, good exit. Better exit still. Nice. Full send it. Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> So scary. Nice. Oh, that's a good lap. Nice, let's do a 36 mid. Ah. ah, not so good. I've lost some some time here. Anyway, not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, cool. Nice. Very nice. Let's go to the garage. Set up. Tiny little bit of uh, change at the uh, um, at the pressure. So one, two, three down because we saw this going up to 28 at some turns. But you know we will get it when we go through the start finish line. So three clicks down. This is pretty. <clears throat> oh, today I'm I cannot talk. This is pretty good. This I could use one more click up, and the same here. So one, two three something like that okay let's save this so let's call this uh, 1b because we're still at the pressures and now we're gonna do something very interesting all right okay so we had a go at the tire pressures we know they are correct now it's time to do something particular so what I have prepared for you guys is uh sorry about that where are we is this nice little graphic where is it here it is okay so the map of the circuit now it's better if you do this with you know um excel sheet or something similar uh but to better understand everybody I've made it on top of the map of the circuit. So as you can see, we have the number of the turns, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And at each number of the turn, I have put this turn in cost exit. Uh, I've only put those uh, into the uh, turns that, you know, they are important for us. I mean, for example, I haven't put this on number two, I have put this on number three. You see here, turn three, because number two is not a turn, pro practically. Uh, so I've only put this on uh, the turns that they are important for the handling of the car. So what we're going to do, we're going to separate each turn in three phases. This is basic. Usually I separate the turn in at least four phases, but this is basic. We need to understand how it works. And three phases of each turn are more than enough so turn in which means what happens to the handling of the car how the car behaves when you are turning and releasing the brakes okay so 
turning in while releasing the brakes. That's the first phase. We have to understand what is going on in that situation. Coasting, which means that you have released the brakes and you are going from the turning to the apex of the turn. Let me show you a little bit better what I mean by that. So turning usually is from here. Okay. From here to, whoops, to here, something like this, okay? Right, so let's do this red because we are breaking. And uh, this is also red, okay? Something like that. This is a little bit goes through the yellow like this. Oops. Okay. Now, then we have uh, the costing phase where you are not touching either the brake or the accelerator. You are just releasing the pedals, no pedal input, and you are traveling with the car towards the apex, which happens more or less, depending on the turn. It could be later, it could be sooner. It doesn't matter. This is just an example. So it happens somewhere here. Okay? And at some point, you start accelerating. Right? So you accelerate. Back to the accelerator again and you are exiting the turn full on power. Okay. So those are the four phases, the, the three basic three basic phases of, uh, of a turn. We are going to analyze what the car is doing into each phase. Okay. But before doing that, before doing that, it is also important to understand is, is it my driving style or is it the car's reaction okay so that is important to understand so how we're we gonna do this because someone in the comments uh, of of the YouTube um, community comments he asked me okay how can I understand if I am experiencing understeer or oversteer because my driving is bad or because the car is experiencing where, where is the difference and that is a great question that's a great question we which often people do not ask themselves this kind of question. Many times, you know, people do not ask themselves this kind of question. They experience something and they believe it's always the car usually, you know. Uh, so they try with the setup to um, control this and they end up ruining all the handling uh, by many different ways. So how we are going to do this without using the MOTEC, because MOTEC, you know, many people say, you can use the MOTEC, and it is true, but to use the MOTEC, you need to learn and know how to read telemetry. And it's not an easy thing. It's not at all an easy thing. Telemetry means that you have to train your brain to recognize patterns, okay? And if you don't know what is happening on, on the car when you're driving, it's even harder to recognize patterns in the telemetry. Telemetry is not a magic wand where you are going to look at it and it will tell you, oh, here you have oversteer, here you have understeer, do this to change it. It doesn't work like that. That's why usually, you know, the, fir you, the, the first thing you do in sim racing is that you are the driver. And there is a lot that the driver can understand before going into the telemetry. Telemetry is a higher level that you have to transform yourself from a driver into an engineer, into a telemetrist, okay? But that's a higher level. Let's start from the basics. Let's start from what the driver can do to understand what the car does. And one of the most important things that uh, circuit training offers to, to people that want to learn, I mean in real life, okay, in real life, is an exercise like the following. So here's what we're going to do. So here's what we're going to do. 
We're gonna travel to the turns on the correct uh, gear, but a little bit slower, not that fast. Okay, not that fast. So go for a lap around the circuit, following the correct line, but slower. Okay? A little bit slower. What we want to do is being able to maintain the line, okay, that we want to follow when we are pushing, uh, without big problems, without, you know, corrections. We just want to follow the line, okay? So now I'm doing a lap like this to show you, and then we're going to analyze what is happening inside the turn, okay, in a minute. So let first show you the kind of speed we are using. Again, here, like that, you see. Not very slow, okay, but still easy to maintain the line that we want, okay. Again, second gear, turn the wheel like this, wait and see what's happening, okay. So this is what we're going to do. Why we're going to do that? All right, so let's see. Now, first of all, we're going to try this at, for starters uh, into the very long uh, bends. So the first one, the third one, uh, the last one bends like that. Not at the CK, not at those na short bends. Nice. So in a bend like this, we arrive in fourth gear. Okay, we go in, release. Now, when I release instantly, does the car goes inside? And when I go to the accelerator hard, does the car wants to oversteer or does it want to go straight? So let's try here in second gear. So we're gonna go inside like this, okay, like this, and release. We went straight. Let's try it again on the other turn. So release, it wants to rotate. First gear, release. A little bit of others, but it was, you see, it goes inside. If I turn more, it goes inside. I don't have big problems to uh, turn the car into the turn while coasting. Let's try this in fourth gear here. Okay, so fourth gear, go in, go in. So it wants to go in. You see that the lower the speed, it wants to go in. Okay. So that's good. So in coasting, the car seems relatively stable, you see? It doesn't really, it, it wants to over rotate, but just by a tiny bit, not too much. You see, here again, it rotates, it doesn't turn around a lot. That means that in coasting, without input pedal, okay, the car is pretty much stable, okay? So let's try it again. Even if for in first gear, you see, in first gear, it doesn't want to really over rotate. Again, third gear, it doesn't want to over rotate too much. It does over rotate a tiny bit, okay? But not too much. Again, release. Ah, here a little bit more. So at medium speeds, it wants to rotate a little bit more. You saw what happened. We released immediately. The accelerator and the car instantly went inside. Let's try it again. Second gear, so slow. Yeah. Not that bad, but still, I don't feel, you know, a big instability of the rear end when I'm not touching any pedal. So that means that the car in coasting, in coasting, in pure coasting, is you know, simply natural, neutral. It's neutral. It doesn't want to understeer, it doesn't want to oversteer. Again, it is important, you know, to go in like this and not do that, okay? So, because obviously, if you are exaggerating the steering input like this, it will either understeer, okay, or oversteer, but that's my problem in that case. The car needs soft inputs, precise inputs, like that, like this. That's it, okay. If I go too fast and I go wide, like just happened, that's my problem. It's not the car's problem. 
and it's easy to understand that because you know you just go into the turn you have to go to the speed that usually you should go not faster not slower okay you see the car completely follows the line so that's one important lesson so what that does it mean let's pause for a minute and let's go back here okay so very interesting cost neutral the cost is neutral the car doesn't want to over rotate here again cost neutral okay this one doesn't even we didn't even try it but it's no big deal even this one in uh, when we are going downhill even here it was almost neutral we can we can write here neutral maybe slight rotation okay we can do this cost again here neutral no problem neutral whoops okay again here completely neutral over here too and here maybe here we had a slight understeer a couple of times so let's try it slight understeer okay so that's it okay right excellent here everything was neutral no problem about that uh, also here too and here too no problem here we have again that was a high speed corner we had neutral with a slight rotation so let's write this down slight rotation okay uh, this one is for this corner here number four because I didn't have any space so again that was neutral no problem about it now why we are writing all that we need that to make a mental map of what we experience around the circuit I mean all, all, many times I'm asking you know my co-drivers that we are preparing a setup to do a endurance race okay uh, I'm asking them, how's the car at turn one? How do you feel the car around the turns? And they either they don't know what to tell me in a specific turn, or they will go into engineering, oh, it's understeery. And then I'm going like, where? Turn in, costing, exit, which turn? And like, oh, um, pretty much everywhere. That doesn't help. You need to, to give the correct feedback, not to the engineer, but to yourself too you need to compartment why, why am i choosing such terrible words you need to divide <laughs> the circuit into turns and each turn into phases okay you need to divide every single one and write it down because it is impossible to remember everything by memory okay so write down each phase of the turn for each turn of the circuit so right now we already know that the car is not bad at all in costing. We don't have any serious problems. Next thing, one of the most difficult things is braking. So let's go in and try the same thing while slightly applying brake force on the pedals. Okay? So what we're going to try here? We're going to start instantly here. Fourth gear and slight brake. Whoa! Did you saw that? Did you saw slight braking? I wasn't 100% braking. Let's see the replay right away. Uh, toggle hood inside. Let's move forward. Okay, we are here. Let's go slow. Please watch the brake pedal here. Okay. So let's go in. This goes down. Watch the brake pedal on the HUD. All right so we go in at the normal speed that we would go even slower and at some point now i will apply a little bit of braking look at look at that it's like not even 20 percent. it's like 10 percent. look at how the car rotates that's a lot of rotation with you know and now i'm braking and panicking because i'm like oh my god what is happening i mean look at it from the outside okay 
and this always happens <coughs> when you are applying small amounts of braking force because at high amounts of braking force the ABS saves you you know it distributes the braking look at that look at how much angle I mean I'm, I'm delivering tofu here takumi <laughs> I mean it's the rifter time right so um, why is that because as we said this car moves the weight a lot to the front okay and it all that inertia from the big rear engine wants to rotate and move forward so at high speeds just the tiny amounts of braking creates way too much oversteer and that's one big example let's move on into the other turns and see what happens braking second gear not that bad, not that bad. Oh, a little bit of over rotation. First gear, it's good. First gear, not that bad. Let's try it again in fourth gear. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Dear God. So again, high speed, oversteer. Again. Oh, ooh, slap into my face. That was nasty. That was... Alright, so let's try it here at the second gear turns. I had some understeer into this turn probably it's the camber of the road that doesn't help all right so first gear no big deal so the mechanical grip is good at low speeds we don't have any big issues but at mid to high speeds we have big issues with a uh, turning oversteer Ooh, look at that so what we're we gonna do we have some results let's go back and write it down okay so turn in here neutral turning in third gear here slide oversteer okay slide oversteer here turning in number four neutral this okay we don't we don't care about this so zero here sev severe severe oversteer all right this is really bad here this is oversteer this is rotation let's keep call this rotation okay so it doesn't really bother us too much um, here it's some rotation some under it depends it depends on the line so we're gonna check this turn better here it is pretty neutral no big deal so I, I believe in the number 11 it's more my line than the car here we have again rotation 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 okay i will also make this one instead of slide oversteer oops i will call it rotation and here we have again severe over oversteer all right like that this one is neutral okay so you can see now that we have a pattern okay so Actually, two patterns in slow turns, the turn in and the light braking is either neutral or even it helps us, you know, to rotate the car without problems of controlling the car. In high speed turns, we have severe oversteer, severe oversteer, and we have pretty clear oversteer also in mid speed turns. Okay, so this is 
a very good indication that something simply doesn't work properly. That, I mean, this is something that will, at least depending on my driving style, my driving style, it, it um, influences my driving and it doesn't permit me to attack the coordinates and go for a better lap because I am really scared going into those turns and being scared means that you have to do many small you know, corrections to go into the turn. You are waiting for the car to calm down and then you accelerate or you turn you know, to stabilize the car. You have to wait. So that severe oversteer for my driving style is not something that I want. Now, there are other drivers that might be feeling perfectly the car into the, the same car into those corners because they might be more precise with the steering wheel, they might be more uh, smooth with the with the pedal inputs. Doesn't matter. You write it down. If you are if you have rota if you feel just a rotation into this turn, okay, then write here rotation. And that will then give you different setup uh, choices when you are going to change the setup, right? So by doing that, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, say that, oh, I don't know if it's my driving or if it's the car. No, it's the car for your driving, okay? Because you're not really pushing the car. We are doing specific um, situations and specific inputs to understand what the car does, okay? Okay. So, next step, let's see what happens at the exit. And now, exits. Okay? So, we keep on driving. We are going to arrive to the apex of the corner and we are going to hammer the accelerator now and see what happens. So, second gear inside here, whoops, like that, and hammer. A little bit of power oversteer. Try again, go in, hammer. Again, oversteer, ooh. All right, so first gear again. Hammer the, oh, now we, we hammer the accelerator and we had some understeer. This is flat out, no problems. This is again flat out with this car, no problems. Let's try this, whoops. Now hammer. Very neutral here. Hammer. Ah, a little bit of understeer. Ooh. Got some light damage. Light damage. <laughs> All right, so second gear. That was pretty neutral here. Third gear. Some oversteer but there is also a crest here so you have to remember this a little bit of oversteer it's more rotation than oversteer there we're really provoking it and trying to understand what's happening but no that's okay here understeer A bit of, of uh, rotation, rotation. It was pretty good. Over rotation here, but we know that this turn is really difficult and strange. Some rotation again. Understeer. Here is slight, slight understeer. If we go flat out, it would be nice to do it flat out, but not so possible. See some rotation. But again, we are hammering the accelerator. 
Okay, so what do we have here? Here we have some rotation. What happened? <laughs> it did refresh of the page instead of writing. So rotation. Here we have some over rotation. Okay. Rotation again here. That is flat out. We don't care about that. Okay. Here we had some understeer. And again here, severe understeer. Now here we had some rotation. Oops, where we are? Ah, yeah, here. So here we have understeer and then oversteer. That's a very tricky turn. Here it goes, okay, nothing serious. I will put rotation, but honestly, no big deal. And here we have understeer. And also here, understeer. All right, so. All right, so um, let's see if we can find a pattern. And it is important to, you know, as I said, know how to read and find the patterns. Driving fast and making setups is all about finding patterns. And what we see here is the car in the slow speed that turns is pretty much good. Uh, yes, you can improve everything, but, I mean, it's a good car. It doesn't do anything that I cannot control. Okay, I could use maybe a little bit of extra rotation somewhere, but honestly, I can handle this. Now, in the mid speed and fast speed corners, it has both rotation or severe oversteer, okay, uh, in, um, in turn in, okay, you can see here, severe oversteer in turn in, oversteer here, and pretty much always understeer in exit. That happens in all mid to high speed turns. Again, here you see severe oversteer, understeer in exit. That happens to pretty much all the mid to high speed turns. This is a pattern. It doesn't happen in the slow turns. It happens identical or pretty much identical in all to mid to high speed corners. Here is a pattern for you. What this means? That means that we have an aerial problem. Uh, so you should have understood by now that those cars are extremely sensitive to ride height and they are very sensitive to uh, pitch. So pitch, what it means, it means that the front end goes down and the rear end goes up and vice versa. So every time the car does this movement, the aerial balance moves forward when it goes to braking like that or backwards when you are accelerating. And they, it moves front and back a lot, a lot. And so, uh, if this car has big oversteer when you're braking and big understeer when you're accelerating at high-end speeds, it means that it is very pitch sensitive. So, how can we cure pitch sensitiveness? Well, we have a couple of uh, possibilities, okay? We could change the ride heights and create more or less oversteer. That's the easy way, okay? We know that Step number two is you go into the setup and you lower or raise the right height of the rear or if you want a bigger effect of the front. And by that way, you move the aero balance to the front or to the rear and you modify the handling of the car more understeer or more oversteer. Okay, we could do that easily here. Uh, it's... Well, the Porsche is a little bit of a trickier car because it doesn't have so much downforce. It's not always the case that if you, you know, lower or raise the rear right height, you're going to create much of a difference. Okay. And you can see that here when I'm lowering, it doesn't really moves a lot or sometimes even goes back and forth uh, the front arrow variation. Why? Because as we said, this car doesn't really generate a lot of downforce from the diffuser. So the pitch sensitivity is not so much from the diffuser, but from the front ride here, probably. But we know that that works. Okay. 
So let's just move this thing to 65 like this and have a go. Just a simple go. We are. This is not what we're going to do. But I have already many times told you that step one, pressures. Step two, right head. So let's try the right head and see if we improve. Ah, we still have some, but it's better. I think it's better already. Anders still here. Oh, <laughs> that's my fault. More Anders still here. A little bit better in turning and more understeer. Ooh. Let's try to heat up a little bit the tires, but understeer again. And here we should go flat out, but oh so much understeer. Look at that. So it works. But does it also work in the turn in? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Tires are still cold, but let's try. Slow speeds, a little bit of understeer, more than I would like, but it works, it works. As we said, right head, it works. So lower rear right head, it made the car more stable, more understeery, of course, but more stable. Let's see if it's still, you know, more, uh, so much speed sensitive. So now that we're gonna break down into fourth gear, oh, understeer here. Ah, better. But again, look at that understeer. Way too much. Alright, so. We found out that, indeed, altering the right head changes the handling of the car. Okay. Um, but in reality, it doesn't really change the pitch sensitivity. The pitch sensitivity remains. Simply, the whole aero balance is more rearwards, which means that you get more understeer, especially at the acceleration of mid to high speed turns, okay? So you get more understeer everywhere, and that understeer, when you are turning in, it becomes more like, um, you know, less understeer. So it doesn't become oversteer like before, but it becomes less understeer. But the pitch sensitivity does remain. Could we do something else to make the pitch sensitivity less evident? Yes, we can. <laughs> so let's go back to 70 millimeters rear right head at before. Now, I don't know if you remember, guys, but the pitch sensitivity is created by the downforce, the you know the the vicinity of the front splitter to the ground, so the front right head, and the rear diffuser right head. So as those two chains right heads, the whole um, aero balance moves forward or backwards. Right, this is clear. Now, we do have one aerodynamic element that doesn't care about the pitch at all, and that's the rear wing. The rear wing doesn't care at all about the pitch, because whatever the pitch you have, the rear wing always get fresh, clean air from the high uh, from, uh, after after the roof I mean from from the the high uh, level of of the airflow so it really doesn't care if it's higher or lower from the pitch of the car the pitch of the car is just you know half degree so it doesn't really care which means that you have an element that creates downforce okay and it's always constant, the downforce. So if the rear wing creates something like 40% of the whole downforce of the car, that's it. That's always that. The front splitter and the rear splitter, let's say that they create 30 and 30. This changes as the car pitches forwards or backwards. Okay. So the front creates 40 and the rear 20, or the front creates 20 and the rear 40. But the rear wing still creates 40, constantly. So what happens if we raise the rear right wing? Okay. So if you generate more downforce from the rear wing, okay, that downforce remains stable. And then the car, so the rear wing ends up you know, generating more percentage 
of the whole downforce of the car, which means that it also immediately makes the pitch sensitivity less severe. It's not like it disappears, but it is less severe because before you had 40% from the rear wing and 60% from the other two elements, and those other two elements were very high pitch sensitive. If we raise the rear wing, we get 60% or 50% from, from the rear wing and 50% from the other two. So the other two now influence a little bit less the, da the, the downforce balance of the whole car. So high rear wing not only generates more downforce, but also makes automatically the car less pitch sensitive. That is very important to understand and to remember. Of course, it generates more drag, but we don't care about that. Why? Because that's the track. Find me a straight line. I mean, we have only one straight line, and it is very short. The, all, the, the, other, the whole other circuit is turn after turn after turn. I mean, even that thing that could have been a turn, it still uh, could have been a, a straight line. It's still a chicane, a long, fast chicane, but it's still a chicane. So uh, this is a circuit where we really could use and try a very high downforce, high drag setup, at least, you know, for uh, people like me, like you probably, that, you know, we're not going to follow. I mean, I'm pretty sure the aliens just go down to rear wing, something like five, and still deal with it. Fine. But let's make a setup for us. Let's make a safe setup that permits us to push and make, you know, uh, a lap time of like 36 without big issues. And that's with the fuel load of 60 liters, which means that during the race, we can attack because the most important thing is to be to feel safe on the car and be able to attack. So let's raise the rear wing by two clicks and go up to 10 degrees. See what we get. Of course, people will say, but Aris, if you raise the rear wing, you're also going to have even more understeer. Yes, but we can deal with that with the mechanical balance. Most important fact is that we eliminate some of the pitch sensitivity like that. Okay, and pitch sensitivity is an ugly beast that can bite you while you don't want it. Uh, so let's create a higher downforce car and see how the car it creates. It's going to be an understeer. Let's find out. Oh, that was so nice here. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have understeer here. Yep, we need to modulate. So, of course, on that very fast hunt, right turn, we have issues. Very good braking, of course. The extra drag and downforce helps us. Very neutral. Oops, sorry about that. I mean, second lap and the delta is pretty good. Oh, I'm pushing it. Oh, that's so much more stable. Oh, I like that. I love stability. Nice. Look at that. Delta is green. And I, I feel some understeer, so we can improve on that. Look at that, I'm gonna do a faster lap already. Nice. Yeah, I have to wait here. But uh, it seems that I haven't lost that much time. Fastest lap already. Oh, so much stability in the turning, love it.
tires are much better. Now you will probably see from my driving style that I can push the car, I can attack the corners. I can brake later, I can attack and not afraid, you know, to, to turn into. Look at that. Yeah. Ah, could have done better. Look at that. Look at that lap time. Ah, my bad here. Nice, 36.4, it could have easily be a 36.3 or 2. This was really great, this was really great because I was able to attack the corners much, much better. Uh, again, this is for me, that's my problem, all right? Because I need stability to be able to attack the, because I'm not so precise, and again, we're talking about me. I'm not so precise and smooth into my steering wheel inputs and into my pedal inputs. I'm a little bit more, you know, aggressive. Uh, the the lines are definitely de definitely precise when I'm trained, but how I tra transition from you know straight line into the turn, I'm a little bit aggressive for that. That's my error, and by practice, I'm trying to improve it but I know this is my problem. Um, so what I'm going to do, what, what I'm doing here is trying to make all the cars in a way that they help me when I'm doing this bad thing, because that's, that's a problem of the driver always. So I'm trying to help myself when I'm doing this thing, the car has also to accommodate me and help me by not over-rotating. Without over-rotation, once the car is set, I can go into the accelerator and correct the line and exit the corner fast enough. Okay, so what we did right now was exactly what I needed to be faster in the turning. Let's see if we can improve on the exit. Okay, so we need exit. So what we're going to do, one of the things we could do is uh, raise it to be the camber at the front. That could be an idea, it might uh, consume more of the front tires, but it might be a good thing, and we will talk about that in a minute. Uh, so, let's see in the mechanical grip if we have something we could do. Um, the wheel rate at the back is a little bit at the mid to low side. Well, um, <laughs> right, so here's what we could do. As we said, this car is quite a bit, you know, pitch sensitive. We corrected this with um, the, uh, the rear wing. Now the rear wing is higher, and now the car is much less pitch sensitive. We could also use stiffer wheel rates. Stiffer wheel rates means that the car will move less in pitch, also in roll, but less in pitch. Less movement in pitch means even more stable platform under uh, pitch, okay, because less pitch, the aero platform is more stable. How to do this, as we said? Stiffer wheel rates. Now, stiffer wheel rates, especially at the rear, doesn't only mean that we have less pitch sensitivity, but it also gives us more rotation from the mechanical balance. We know that stiffer axis loses grip faster not has less grip. That's that's the important thing here, always. Remember this. A stiffer axis, so stiffer wheel spring, wheel rate, whatever, okay, doesn't mean that you have less grip, necessarily. It might also happen this if you go from one extreme to another. But it loses the grip sooner than before. Why? Because the stiffer it is, the faster the wheel uh, sorry, the faster the weight 
transfer will happen. Okay, when the springs are are soft, okay, and you go into the turn, the body will start to roll. Okay, with soft springs, it takes time to roll. By the time it needs to end the roll movement, absorbs the weight transfer. So the weight transfer moves slower. We are talking tenths of a second, even less than tenths of a second. But there is a difference. So, if you have a stiffer rear part of the car, stiffer than the front, it means that the weight transfer at the rear is going to be faster because there is less roll. And so, less roll, finished, full weight transfer. The front will be a little bit softer, which means it will move like that, it will roll more. And during that time, the weight shift will be longer. What that does, what this means? It means that the rear will arrive at the limit of the grip by loading the tires sooner, okay? And the front will follow. If I load the tires sooner, I will get more grip sooner, but then I can also go over that limit of grip sooner. So the the axis that will lose grip sooner if I'm, you know, pushing the car over the limit, it's going to be the rear one because it's stiffer. Faster will will uh, uh, weight shift, faster overwhelming of the grip, and it will lose grip sooner. That means it will help me rotate. So at the initial turning, the faster weight shift will stabilize the rear because I will get the grip sooner. But as the turning keeps going on, and I'm going also into the accelerator, the stiffer rear end will start to lose grip and will help me rotate the car. Will it be enough? I don't know. We're going to see. So one click stiffer wheel rate at the rear. We could also use probably a stiffer anti-roll bar. One click. Maybe it's too much. We'll see. And uh, maybe 4.2 camber at the front. So all of that will probably you know, help us rotate the car a little bit more by mechanical balance, not by aerodynamic balance. So let's go out and see. Okay, let's try and see if we have improved or if we overdid it. All right, let's see if we can do a better lap, but the car seems better. Still some high speed uh, own power oversteer, which I don't know if we can fix, but we can try. Very deep braking and still we made the apex and everything nice. Oh, we're going do we're going really do good. Ah, uh, my bad. My bad. Somehow I saved it, but that was all my bad. Uh, a little bit of understeer here. Ah, uh, again my bad. And I've lost everything. Oh my god, this is terrible driving. Don't do like Aris. It does. It does turn a little bit better still have some problems but as you can see it permits me to attack really hard up to the point that you know the car can't make it because I'm I'm a donkey and I'm attacking really really hard even here is much better than before I mean look at that Even 
even fastest lap with all the errors. All right, we still have some understeer, so let's see if we can improve on that. Okay, you just need just a tiny bit on the exit, and it will be great, especially at high speeds, which reminds me that this car has a great future that other cars don't have. It has a front splitter, and it's something that you know makes small adjustments. We can use it. So, one, two clicks. Let's see what will happen. Might be, you know, for, for the better, might not. We'll see. Okay? Right, so uh, the dumpers, we could use some extra bumping here. So let's go two clicks up here. Uh, let's leave the rebound as it is. Let's not overdo it. And let's lower by two clicks the rebound at the front. So now, here's the situation with the dumpers. If you do small clicks, then they act from where you are, then they act pretty much as we know the dumper. So a little bit softer rebound at the front, one click or two clicks, it will probably give some front end grip, mechanical grip, and rotate the car at the exit, okay? As we know, as usual. But if you exaggerate with the bumpers, so let's, for example, say that we go up to 15, then you might experience the exact opposites. Why does that? Because by making the dampers very stiff, you control the ride height of the car because the dampers are really stiff, which means that at, at very high rebound stiffness like that, when we go to the accelerator, the front end of the car, instead of lifting, it will stay fixed because the damper will you know, control it and fix it, which means that it will ge generate more downforce and you're going to have more front aero downforce to deal with the very fast uh, front bends. Um, is this the case? I don't know. We will try this way and the other way. For now, we were at around 10 here, so I will try just 8. So just two clicks down and see if this improves. And then we can do the other way around. So big differences in the clicks of the rebounds affect the aerodynamics. Okay. Small differences in the clicks of the rebounds affect the mechanical Greek, uh, grip and weight transfer. Um, so let's see. Wobbly head. <laughs> power! Give me power. Nice here. Whoa! Extra rotation. Doesn't seem to be much faster though, still. But second lap, so let's wait. Nice. Better. Ah, too much rotation. Improved. Not by much, but... Better again. Oh, that was... That was bad. Ha, 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 boom. It's better. Hello, Henrik. Herrick. Herrick, sorry. Sorry. Um, I want some extra thing. I want uh, 
I'm a little bit of afraid of, you know, pushing the car. So I would like something different. So, boo, 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 boo. maybe it's too much splitter. Maybe it's too much splitter. So maybe we can do, we can go down one here. And maybe we could do something different. Um, I don't know what to do, to be honest. Or I could leave the splitter and try to, to control a little bit. Hmm. No, actually, uh, yes, splitter three. And we had some over rotation at the exit this time. So maybe we can go down one or two clicks on the preload, fine tuning now, fine tuning, to help with controlling the exit and have a better rotation at the costing when we're doing nothing, okay? Uh, true, the pressures, we have to fix the pressures. They seem to be good, but uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, we have to fix the pressure. So let me do three or four laps like that, see how the pressures react, and then go in and correct the pressures. You know what? I'll try again the splitter at five. We have the less preload here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just one click of brake bias to help me not go into too much oversteer at turn in because of the fraud splitter. And that's it. I'm not touching anything else. If you see me touching stuff, kill me. Uh, they opened the racetrack at 10.30 p.m. for me alone because dev hacks. Dev power. <laughs> Okay, let's try. Thanks, Johan, for the follow. Come on. Nice. Come on. That's good. That's good. We have another best lap. 36.2, I take it. Decent. <laughs> Let's go to the drive here. Where is it here? And what do we have here? We have uh, right. We have um, what is that? Uh, Porsche. Line. Yeah, let's do it like that. Come on, one I one, two, GT, three, R. Right. Here it is. And then, where's the, let's go here, documents, asset, across the competition, uh, setups, setups, pop, 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 at the end, we have Porsche, this one, and we go to the soundboard, and we have those two nice little setups, like that, 
Uh, maybe we can also save the replay for the people that might want to have a look. Yes, we can save the replay, which is always a very nice thing. To have a look. So, uh, replay. Replay saved. Force it. That's it. Nice. Okay. So, I guess we have everything. That looks pretty nice. So, let's have a look at that. And uh, questions and answers, guys. So if you're still alive, I mean, we were 500 and... 40 people at the chat now we have remained 322 which is still an incredible amount at one o'clock in the morning uh, so i don't know if we can you know answer a couple of questions and uh, then call it a day and have some sleep 